All right, open your Bibles to James chapter 3. James 3, if you don't have a traditional Bible but you want to use one, just raise your hand and one of these beautiful people will bring you one. You can either borrow that or you can keep it. It's our gift to you. Or you can take your smartphone or your tablet and you can open up the version or the Bible app and all the notes and scriptures, everything except for pictures have already been uploaded. If you are watching us live online or at one of our many services at the Brown County Correctional Facility, love you guys and so glad you're part of our family and super glad here here on the home opening weekend. You guys got here early so that you could go and tailgate. I already know that. But so give yourselves a hand for loving Jesus as much as you love the G. So the book of James, it's this super practical, real life faith blueprint that's like practical, but provocative, relevant, but revealing and is so in your face. James, who's a pastor, by the way, talks to his people in this book. And ultimately, he talks to us in this way, like we should just know better. And so he says things in his book, like consider pure joy when you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith is going to develop perseverance. He says, if any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God because he gives generously to all without finding fault. And that will be given to you. He says, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, for man's anger doesn't bring about the righteous life that God desires for us. He also says, what good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith, but he has no deeds? We talked about this last, last week. He said, can such a faith save that person as the body without the spirit is dead? So faith without deeds is dead. And, and when he says these things to James, this is all so common sense. Like he's talking to his friends and ultimately to us. And he's saying, y'all, listen, times are going to get tough. Stick it out. Stick it out because you already know that God's got you. If you don't know something, all you have to do is just ask God. He'll give it to you. He'll show you. Don't stress out. Don't lash out. Don't trip out. Slow your roll. Don't just say you love God or live for him. Prove it with your actions. It's just like basic stuff, right? apparently not. And so because of that, James has to totally in this book bear down. Like this isn't the first book that people would read when they become Jesus people, because for some people it can be totally off-putting because to James, he's talking to these people who, who ought to know better. I mean, you ever assume that your kids know some stuff, but they don't <laughs> like like, bro, what about hitting your sister in her mouth? Seemed like a good idea at the time. Like, well, what's, what went through your mind when you thought, okay, yeah, I'm going to slap her right in the mouth and nothing's... Or, or, or you ever walk in your kid's room and go, really? With the wet towels on the floor, at the wood floor? Again, like, how, it's, you, do you feel like you tell your kids the same stuff? And you feel like a CD, if anybody who's over 40, do you know what that is? There's a little silver object that you put... Inside, there's probably a slot in your cart. You didn't know what that was for. You thought that was for that thing that you bought off Home Shopping Network that now you put your phone on. But there used to be these things called CDs, and you'd put them in, and you could listen to music in beautiful audio quality. And do you ever feel like you're that guy? Like you're on repeat? You're like you're on skip. You're the same day, same, 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 with towels, 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 dishes in your room. You ever have dried up ketchup on the floor? And then you look at your kid, and you say, how long is it? common sense. Except it's not. <laughs> and so sometimes as a parent, like a pastor, sometimes you have to bear down. And for some of you, this book, the book of James has gotten all up in your business. Things like, no, you can't do that. Or you, you know, you shouldn't do that. Or, or bro, why, why would you do this? And this is a pastor who is all up in our business. Let me encourage you today. Uh, today's no different. Uh, I want to share with you a message that's probably the toughest of all of the messages in James because I want to talk to you about a message that we're calling Taming the Tongue. Let's pray. God, we love you. We're grateful to you. You're our friend who sticks closer than a brother. And so today, I pray in this place, our hearts would be moved, our hearts would be expanded, our hearts would be changed, that we would leave this place less like us and, and more like you, God, that you would shift some things, you would move some things, you would adjust some things that need to be shifted, moved, adjusted so that we would become better followers of you. 
In Jesus' name, amen. James chapter three, starting in verse one, it says, not many of you should become teachers. That's a great encouraging first line to a chapter. Now listen, y'all, no. You, yes, four of you, no. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who's never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the entire animal or take ships for an example. Although they're so large and are so driven by the strong winds, they're steered by a really small rudder wherever the pilot wants it to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by such a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. We're just here to encourage you today. Verse 7, all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It's a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue, we can praise our Lord and Father, and with it, we can curse other humans who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praises and come curses. My brothers and sisters, this shouldn't be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Water And so in these 12 verses, James, the great pastor, he just lays it out. And this right here is the longest discourse in the Bible about the tongue. And actually, James details this topic over and over and over again. 14 times, James talks about the tongue. And he's laying out how our tongue can get us into trouble. How often have we said things that we wished we could get back? The minute that you said it, you're like, oh, man, I... I shouldn't have said that. How many words that you've spoken have you, have you tried to grab those mugs from midair and it comes like, ah! <laughs> you just try to, oh, if I could just, if I could just put that back in, in my, maybe my marriage would, maybe my kids would be, maybe my career would be if I would just, you ever meet people who that they just want to be right? They would be far more successful if they could just be teachable, but instead they are insistent upon being right. And so everything that comes into their mind comes out of their mouth. But I love what David wrote in the 141st Psalm. He said, help me, Lord, to keep my mouth shut and my lips sealed. I think this needs to become my life verse. This needs to be the one that if you got a tattoo, (laughs) for all you church people who grew up they told you you couldn't drink or chew or run around what girls would do or get a tattoo. You ever had a person tell you, oh my gosh, you got a tattoo, you can't go to heaven now. I thought, that's it, that's the thing, that's the one thing. I mean, it's a cross and it's John three sixteen. But if you're gonna get a tattoo, this is the one. Help me, Lord, to keep my mouth shut. This should be somebody's wedding verse. And the tongue, it's so interesting. For example, did you know that the chameleon's tongue is twice the size of its body? Here's another interesting one. The blue whale. The blue whale's tongue weighs as much as a full-grown elephant. Sometimes I feel like that after I eat cheese. Like, oh. <laughs> oh, even though he's got that big old tongue, the whales don't swim around talking no smack. They don't like go by the elephant, the, the dolphins. How about your mama? They don't say... No, I think they're quiet. And if they say things, they say, say, doesn't it seem like a blue whale is just kind? There's something about him. He doesn't bully people. He just swims around just being big. That's, that's all he does. Then our tongue, our tongue, yours and mine, weighs just a few ounces. Mm. But man, it gets us in trouble. Here's another interesting fact. Did you know that the woman's tongue on average is an inch shorter than a man's? I read that. I said, I don't know about all that. That's the the, the, the devil is a liar. That guy must have, he must have been single. The guy who just, he he was, uh, he doesn't know. He lives in a cabin in North Carolina somewhere. The guy who wrote that. Uh, Maybe y'all just wore it down. It's all it just, you just. (laughs) Guys, what's your shot? You're like, hey, man. And if CL, but you go, bro, it's the pastor. It's, it's got to be, it's probably in the book somewhere. He doesn't just make stuff up. Let's just, before I get ganked, let me give you a couple of uh, facts about the tongue. We're going to call them true tongue facts. Here's the first. 
The tongue is small, but is disproportionately powerful. It is so small, yet it has so much power. It has so much control over our lives. It is the great influencer. It has so much power, so much control over our homes and over our marriages, over our children and over our careers. It has so much power and control over our lives and over the lives of everyone around us. The tongue, it is small, but it is disproportionately powerful. Here's a second tongue fact that James gives us is that the tongue is a bridle. Now, when, when you watch the Kentucky Derby, which, which some of you probably watch that. I mean, watching the Kentucky Derby is like watching golf, but some people you get desperate, they ain't no football on, and so the horses is running, and you know you're a gambler anyway, and so you, well, you already got a tattoo, so you, you may as well gamble. And so uh, you watch the horses. This is my grandpa. I'm going to go watch the horses. I didn't know what that meant, but then the Kentucky Derby came on, and I discovered that the horse is pure power. It's a, a thousand pounds, ready to go, y'all. Sleek and shiny, riddled and rippled with muscles. Basically, is the animal version of me. That's all I'm saying. Just think about <laughs> thousand pounds. <laughs> that's, it. That's, that's how I feel when I eat cheese. Just get it like thousand pounds. Pure power. Yet this little hundred pound jockey sits on top, completely able to control it. And he has that control because he's holding on to the reins which are attached to this little five inch piece of metal in the horse's mouth called a bit. And that bit directs the horse's every motion and move. And regardless of how much power that horse possesses, it is directed and controlled by something so small. Did you know that there is power in your words? Power that is both positive and power that is also negative. That we can change the tone of a room one way or the other with our tongue. We can change the tone of a room when we come in and we say, I love you, I believe in you, you mean the world to me. Oh, girl, you look so good. Did you just get your hair done? Oh, man, your hair looks, have you lost weight? That's the best one, first of all. Lead with that one at all times. Because even if they've gained weight, they go, well, you know, I've been, been eating no carbs, you know, I've been on the Atkins diet, so it's been two days, probably. But these pants are so big, you don't even understand. Have you lost weight? You can change the whole tone of a room, a, a workplace, a school, your marriage with those words. Or you can change the tone of those things when you come in and say, you make me sick. You are so stupid. I wish you were never born. Get out my face. I never want to see you again. Don't you ever call me again. I want a divorce. I don't love you anymore. See how how you can change an atmosphere with this thing that weighs just a few ounces. And James is telling us that the tongue, it is powerful. It is a bridle. But he also tells us that the tongue, it is a rudder. Now, I went on a cruise this summer. It was all right. It was cool. It was a boat. It was uh, a lot of food in Jesus' name. That's if you want, if you want to get heavy. You know, I gained 32 pounds this summer. Thank you, Carnival Cruise Line. It was, just, it was, it was awesome. It was awesome because I was trapped with my family, and they couldn't go anywhere for a few days. It was beautiful. Got to see some beautiful places. But I wouldn't, like, say I'm a cruise guy. My, uh, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law, they're cruise people in the industry, they call those people cruisers. My brother-in-law says they're cruisers. They, they got the cruise points. They got the status. They, they may take a last-minute cruise. We say, where are we going to cruise to today? I'm not much of a cruise guy because I saw the movie Titanic. I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm not trying to throw my blue diamond overboard for nobody. I'm done. Jack, I love you. I'm not, I'm, I've been to the place where the Titanic was built, and it's totally fascinating to see how enormous this ship was. It's 800 and 82 feet, nine inches long, 92 feet, six inches wide, 175 feet tall, 52,310 tons. Yet it was steered by a rudder that was only 15 feet long. And that little rudder forced change upon the ship. That, 
that little 15-foot rudder determined the course of all 52,310 tons and all 3,327 people who trusted their lives to 15 feet of direction. James is saying not only is the tongue powerful, but it is also directional. Here, here's the fourth thing that James says about the tongue, is that the tongue, it is a spark. We see the results of this simple truth on the news all the time. It seems like half the state of California is always on fire. California is always on fire, and Florida is always getting hit by a hurricane. All we have to worry about is cheese. So like we're, we're, we're fine in the middle here. There was just this little spark. Somebody went camping. They, they didn't put the fire out properly or they, or they sparked something and it flew off in the woods and they, they didn't realize. It started as just, just a little spark and now it's a fire that's burning out of control. A few years ago, on the news, they talked about a fire that burned out 200,000 acres. That's 312 square miles. That's, that's more than the landmass of Green Bay, Madison, and Milwaukee combined. A forest that took hundreds of years to grow was all of a sudden gone, consumed, totally annihilated by one tiny little spark. And you know what? It's going to take hundreds of years for it to grow back if it ever does. And that's what our words are like. We could say something that for us is just a passing comment, just, just, a, just a little phrase, just, just a, little, a little dig, just, just our opinion. To us, it's, it's just a flicker. But it can ignite a fire that produces total annihilation, total consumption, total ruin in the lives of the people you speak them to. The tongue, it is powerful. It is directional, and it is combustible. <laughs> and it has been a problem since the day we were born. I did not never have to teach my kids to say no. It just came so natural. Maybe pick it. No. Kids say no like their lives are dependent. They're saying no like it is oxygen to their lungs. So the kids can be quiet and just cute. <laughs> say my mama, <laughs> mama. No. You go, like, whoa. Like this a grown man just came into the. Nobody ever had to teach their kids how to say no. Kids just naturally say no. And it's amazing how naturally we continue that. How we can so naturally cut each other, totally carve each other up. We're like a Ginsu knife with our words in and, and out of itself. The tongue is pure, unadulterated evil. It is totally twisted. It can say, I love you, and then in the very next breath say, I hate you. With it, Scripture says, we can bless and we can curse. We can help and we can hurt. You can wake up in the best mood in the morning. You ever wake up in a good mood? Talk to, hey, hey, yeah, it's 71 degrees outside today. And it's December. Hallelujah in Jesus' name. We went to Chicago one time. We brought all of our stuff. It was the middle of January. We got to Chicago. It was 56 degrees. I was like, yeah. You wake up that day like you just won the lotto. You're so excited. You ever wake up in like a really great mood and have somebody just make one comment and that comment can be like a manhole? It is dark and it is deep and you will fall into its blackness. Hey, hey, uh, hey, Jack, I just, uh, just, just real quick before, before you go into that meeting, I just, I just want to tell you what Jimmy said about you. Uh, he said you was ugly and you said, what? <laughs> Like, what? <laughs> Where's he at? Where is it? Because it's about to get twisted in here. Yeah, you was happy. You were kind. You were ready for the day. And somebody could just say one thing. And it totally derails you. Because the tongue, it is powerful. It is directional. It is combustible. And in our own strength, it is untamable. So that is all the bad news. That when you go through James chapter three, you wrap it up. I wish I could just end it right there. And you go, wah, 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 wah. And you'd be encouraged by the gate. It'd be great. But fortunately for you, God's not like me. He never leaves us hanging. And, and uh, you may not be able to tame the tongue, but God can. And not only can God tame the tongue, it is his great desire for your life. And so the Bible tells us gratefully how to tame the tongue. In the 19th Psalm, it says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart 
be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. So today, I want to give you three ways to help you tame your tongue. Here's the first. Pause. Click. Pause. Back in James 1, he says, My beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. That is the cure to your anger problem. Some of us, we, we, we struggle. We, we don't want to struggle. Some of us, we, we want to live our lives with benevolence. But for some of us, we, we, we struggle with this idea of vengeance. And so sometimes, you, you, it's not acceptable, like when you were in first grade, to put your hands on people. Uh, so now, we use our words as weapons. But James says, click it. Click, just pause. Just hold up. Slow down, hold your tongue, pause. We're listening to a little recording, my kids and I on the way to school this week, uh, three parts in the daily devotional about how to control your anger. Every other thing in the book is one part. That was a three-day study on how to control your anger. And, and one of them was, when in anger, count to 10 before you talk. Or, for some of you, it said, count to a hundred. I thought, if I just stand there silent and I count to a hundred, I don't have to worry about being mad because it'll get so awkward that whoever I was talking to will figure we must have been done talking. <laughs> They'll just leave. Hey, hey, sometimes pause. Don't say anything Yet, this single point is why I seldom respond to issues. Like, I get it all the time. People come to me, hey, Sean, what do you, what do you think about this? Pause. Hey, hey, Sean, would you like to give your opinion on this? Nope. Mm-mm. I'm good. What about this issue? What about this topic? What about your opinion? Pause. I'm good. I'm cool. Why? You don't have an opinion on those things? I get that question all the time. How come you don't talk about things that are going on in the news? How come you don't talk about issues that culture is going through? Don't you have an opinion on that? Oh, I got some opinions. <laughs> trust, trust me on that. I have, I have opinions on all of those things. It's just when I share them quickly, they generally are stupid. What I've learned is that you will seldom get in trouble for the words you don't say. Pause. Here's the second way to tame your tongue is ponder. Ponder. You, you don't have to spit out everything that comes into your mind. You don't have to regurgitate everything you think. And so my prayer is, God, help me to think before I speak. You, you, you ever seen a, a tongue scraper? I, I brought this. I, this. This is new, by the way. You, this isn't something you want to buy used. This, you, don't, you don't go on Craigslist. And, and buy this. Do I have a guy say, yeah, it didn't really work for me. It's just still, my tongue is still funky. And so uh, th these are nasty. A, brand new, these are gross. Uh, used, they're extra gross. Uh, but a few years ago, my, my best friend and I, uh, we travel and uh, speak at things together periodically. And when we go, uh, we, we like to share a hotel room just because we laugh and cut up and we don't get any sleep. We're like, you know, two 10-year-olds at a slumber party. And so we watch movies and, and are irresponsible. And except he's very hygienic. And so uh, he, he was getting ready to leave one day and uh, he's in the bathroom like this. I'm not going to do it because the next service I won't be able to say this is new. So I, I do that, yeah. And I, I, I looked at this, I looked in, it's like all this funk was like funk. It was like he was shoveling snow. It was like <laughs> so disgusting. It was like, ah. And I, I walked by, I've never looked at him with disdain ever. He, I love him. I walked by like I was disappointed. I was, I looked at him. <laughs> with disgust in my, I said, what, what are you doing? He goes, oh, bro, <laughs> I'm scraping my tongue. You need to get you one of these. I said, mm, I'll keep the funk right where it is. Thank you very much. But, but as gross as that is, uh, when you and I think before we speak, it scrapes away the words that we shouldn't be speaking. Let, let me show you a practical way to think before you speak. Just a little series of questions that you can ask yourself before you, 
before you open your mouth. Ask yourself, number one, is it true? Is it, and I'm not talking about, is it kinda true? In Club 252, my kids learned that a half-truth is a whole lie. Some of you love to live your lives right on the edge, like one foot is on truth and one foot is on exaggeration. You know exaggeration's a lie. You know when you expand things, puff things up, that's a lie. And so ask yourself, before you even say something, is this true? Here's the second, ask yourself, is it helpful? Like, is, is what I'm about to say gonna make the situation better or is it gonna make it worse? Is it helpful or is it hurtful? You know, our words are like elevators. They're either taking people up or they're taking people down. Before you speak, ask yourself, is what I'm about to say helpful? Third, ask yourself, is it inspiring? Like, like, do these words make people want to be better? Do they make people want to be more like Jesus or less, less like Jesus? Do, do my words make people want to move forward or are they going to make them move backwards? Are my words loading up or are they lifting off? Are they inspiring? Next, ask yourself, is it necessary? Do, do, I, do I need to say this? You, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be held you everywhere, especially on social media. Oh my gosh, some of y'all need to sh- sh- stop t- <laughs> posting some of the things that you post because it's going to come back. They're going to, it's, as Vince Vaughn would say, it's instantaneously out on the line. People are going to see that thing uh, forever. So, so ask yourself is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? And finally, is it kind? Is this going to make somebody feel encouraged? Is is this going to make somebody feel edified? Is it it kind? You, You know, you generally get back what you give out. And so if I want people to be kind to me, then I have to be kind to them. Think. True, helpful, inspiring, necessary kind. Think before you speak. Ponder your words. Here's a third way to help tame your tongue is pray. (laughs) Matthew 12, 34 says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And prayer is a matter of the heart. You know, what's down in the well always comes up in the bucket. Whatever's down in your heart inevitably is going to come up out in your mouth. But Philippians 4 says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate, think on these things. Meditate on these things, which comes back to the 19th Psalm, that God, please, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my God, my strength, my redeemer. If you want to tame your tongue, if you want your mouth to be free, first your heart has to be free. And how does your heart feel today? Are you here? Did you wander in here? Did, did you somebody invite you? Did they drag you in here? Did you come? Because somebody said, if you don't come to church, you don't change, man, we're, we're finished. And you, you don't even know why you came here, but you know how your heart feels. And you know it doesn't feel free. For some of you, your heart feels anything but free. It, it feels foul. But the good news is, if your heart feels foul, it can feel free before you leave this place today. How? Not even my thoughts. But out of the book of Romans, it says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you believe it in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Will you do that today? Will you confess with your mouth and believe with your heart, because if you'll do that, both your tongue and your heart will be tamed. Would you close your eyes all across this place? I wonder if you're here in your heart. It needs to be tamed. Your mouth right now, your mouth is the second thing that you need to think about, because right now your heart is full of filth. It doesn't have to be full of filth. By the time you leave this place, it can be free of filth. It's it's pretty easy. I mean, we make it complicated, but it's pretty easy. It's Romans just said it. Just just confess and believe. We call it confession and profession. In the church, you call it salvation, where you ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. Sometimes that's churchy. Sometimes that's 
difficult to understand. But when you ask somebody to be your Lord, that just means that you give them control. You give them the authority. And some of you need to give away the authority because it's not working for you. When you ask somebody to be your savior, that just means that you acknowledge that you can't rescue yourself. You need somebody else to rescue you. And so I wonder if you're here today and you say, Sean, I need to be rescued. My life's a wreck. Maybe you've not trusted in Jesus before. Maybe you've not tried that option before. Today, we're gonna give you the opportunity to do that. And we're gonna let you confess and profess. Confess that you're a sinner and profess that you believe he can change you. And here's how. Just a moment with nobody looking around. I'm gonna ask for people to do two things. The first is in just a minute, I'm gonna ask for people who need to confess that they're sinners and they haven't done that before to raise your hand and make eye contact with me. That's how you confess. And, and when you make eye contact with me, you can go ahead and put your hand down and then I'm gonna ask everybody in here to make a profession that Jesus is Lord. And we're gonna do that by just repeating a prayer after me and everybody's gonna repeat it together. I'm not gonna ask people to stand or walk an aisle. I'm not gonna embarrass people or try to center them out. But if you're here and you say, Sean, I. I need to confess and profess I want to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior with no one looking around. Would you raise your hand and make eye contact with me? Thank you. Thanks. 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 Okay, I'm going to ask everybody in here to say these words after me. Say, Jesus, I'm a sinner, but I'm sorry. Would you change me? Would you come into my life, be my Lord, be my Savior, free my heart, in Jesus' name, amen. Friend, if you prayed that prayer and you believed in your heart, we believe that scripture says that you are now saved. You begin this new journey. We call it your Jesus journey. It's a walk away from where you are now toward where God wants you to be. We call it your Jesus journey. So we want the opportunity to walk that with you. So if you could help us and take that hello card that was talked about earlier, tear off the bottom part, fill in that whatever information you're okay with us having, check the box that's highlighted in yellow that says I'm choosing to follow Jesus. Either put it in the black buckets when they come around here in just a minute, or you could take it out to the Welcome Center. Either way, we do have a packet for you out at the Welcome Center that we'd love for you to take inside it. There's a three-month devotional. It's a daily scripture and a, a little... Uh, example. It's where we got the, the three days of anger management. And there's also a CD that I talked about early, the little silver thing. It's a 12-minute presentation that I made. It's called What Now? It's 12 minutes of practical things that you should do from this day forward to become everything that Jesus wants you to be. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes one more time. Don't leave yet. We're not done. I'm going to close this up in just a second. I wonder if you're here and you're saved, like you're, you're a Jesus guy or you're a Jesus girl, but you'd say, you know what? My tongue, hmm. I, I, I need to change my tongue. If that's you and you struggle and you need God to help you tame your tongue, would you raise your hand right now just so I could pray for you? So God, for so many people in this place who, who need you, God, I got both my hands up saying, I need it, God, help me slow my roll. I pray for my friends in this place that God, you would give them strength and power and ability to change, tame our tongue in Jesus' name. Amen.